Today on Around Texas, we connect with a Corpus Christi dance instructor that broke her neck in a devastating accident and then overcame her paralysis in order to continue doing what she loves most, teaching and inspiring others through dance. We'll also spotlight the Texas Sea Grant Program at Texas A&M, which is tasked with serving the entire state of Texas. From coastal research and preservation efforts to sustainable fishing, educating the public, and even shaping public policy to benefit coastal communities and launch new industries. Everything is bigger in Texas, and the Texas A&M University system is no exception. With 11 universities and eight state agencies, the people of Texas A&M are serving more Texans and making a bigger difference than ever before. These are the educators, researchers, emergency responders, and public servants of the Texas A&M University system. Learn how their work is impacting both Texas and the world. Welcome to Around Texas with Chancellor John Sharp. Movement and dance have been the focus of Jalissa Cotton's life, but when she broke her neck in a freak surf accident, the founder of the dance program at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi discovered the power of her persistence. We'll meet her and see the example that she set for her students. On this particular day, uh, June 18th, 2020, we went out to the beach and it was a beautiful day. The water was blue-green and the waves were just spot on. I mean, it was not choppy. And uh, the only really negative thing about it is that there was a lot of seaweed in the water. We actually went out further than what we, where we normally went, was, which was the third sandbar. And um, I get right on the top of the wave and it's like it disappeared and the board went straight down into the sandbar. And when it hit, it threw my face into the sandbar. And immediately I felt my nose break. And so I went to stand up and um, I couldn't move. I couldn't move my body. For Jalissa Cotton, the founder of the dance program at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi, the threat of paralysis weighed as heavy as a death sentence. Well, my background is foundationally set in dance. I grew up in a ballet studio and got to experience performing in most of the classical ballets. Pretty much the moment I stepped out of college, I walked back into the studio and started performing and dancing. And then I started choreographing musicals. And I, I learned so much about who I am and where my passions really lie. And it's in, it's in dance. And here I'm laying in the hospital and I can't move anything except my head. When I got sent to Austin to the Texas Neuro Rehab Hospital, I was in my wheelchair and they rolled me over to the double bars and said, you're gonna stand up today. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I don't think I really thought about not being able to move until they stood me up. And I took my first step. And at that point I thought, here we go. I'm on this new journey. I have to do this. And I attribute my entire recovery to my faith, to my dance training, 
because I think my entire life, I have been an, a determined individual. And here I am in a wheelchair, having to reteach my body how to take a step forward or how to stand up out of that chair. It took determination. Um, and it still does. I mean, I have to choose to take a step forward with my right leg. Every time I do that, I have to think about it. Whereas the person next to me, it's not a, it's, it's part of their muscle memory. And my muscle memory is like a baby now. You know, it's in this infant stage where I have to really analyze how you place your foot, which is what I had to do when I learned to dance on point in ballet. I had to learn how to stand on my, the tips of my toes in those shoes. So it's, it's a new journey for me. Jalissa is thriving. And now, so is the dance program she founded, drawing students with a fire in their heart to perform. I can always rely on her to be there for me. And so I'm very appreciative of my relationship with her because I think it is special and I think that it is unique and it has benefited me in many different ways. And I'm grateful. She always pushes us to do the best that we can, but also to find the deeper meaning behind what we're doing in our movement. And that's something that as long as, you know, no matter how uncomfortable it is right now, as long as you keep going and you keep trying, you're gonna get to a point where it looks good. That is such a good mirror for what she's going through right now. Um, Cause she's danced for so long and to have that ability kind of taken away from you. I imagine that she really struggles with having to be so uncomfortable getting back into those old habits, but no matter what, she keeps trying. and. So do we, and eventually we get to a good state. I would say before the accident, Jalissa has always been a very determined and tough, but after the accident, it's really shown how determined she is as a person. Just seeing her growth after the accident to now just shows how much hard work she has put into it. And it's been a very visual example of seeing how much she believes and really walks what she talks about. I always like to say I have the best job on campus. I'm hoping to give something to these students that they're going to hold on to for the rest of their lives because they had an experience in college that they'll never forget. I see the process through the semester and the culmination of that semester, seeing them on stage, smiling and just giving of themselves on stage. It shows me that they have confidence, that they believe in themselves. It gives me so much joy to see that impact on their lives. I'm so thankful to have a group of students who want to um, explore their own lives in this kind of art form. And I feel blessed that I can be a part of that part of their journey. We're here with Jalissa Cotton, who's director of the dance program at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Jalissa, welcome. And tell us, uh, how do you feel? How have you been doing since the accident? Well, thank you for having me, Chancellor. Um, thank you. I, I feel great. Um, my accident uh, 
gave me a lot of challenges, um, but my recovery has been very positive and it's all due in part, I think, to my dance training. My doctors have been very overwhelmed um, with my recovery process and the time that it's taken me to walk again and use my arms again. And um, I, I told them I was a dancer and they said, yep, that's your training. So I'm very thankful <laughs> for that. Well, your recovery was obviously tough, but what did it teach you? It taught me how determined I am and the resilience that I have. Um, I, you know, I have good days and bad days, and some of those bad days, you know, I may crawl into bed, but that lasts such a short period of time because my first thought is, what is that going to do for me? What is that going to do for um, my students, for my family? And so I hop out, put on a positive attitude, and get to work. So what good has happened as a result of this that you would not have experienced if this accident were never to occur? I think it's my teaching style. I've always been a demonstrator um, and had the, the students watch me do as I do kind of approach. And now I can't do that. And so I've had to use my words to explain more about what I want them to do. Um, I have to get them involved and engaged more um, because I may ask a student, hey, will you please demonstrate? Will you please show us how to do this particular turn or this particular floor work? And then we talk through the way the movement should look or how it should feel or what kind of quality it needs to have. And so I feel like that they are now much more engaged. They ask a lot more questions and they're not just observing anymore. Can you teach the kind of resilience that you've obviously shown since your accident? I'm not sure if it's really about teaching the resilience as much as it is I need to be an example of resilience and hopefully they see what I am doing. It's my action that's going to help them see what resilience can do. What do you hope people learn from your story? What I would like for them to learn is that there's freedom in, in hope and determination, working hard, um, and forgiving yourself especially when things may not go the way you want them to. Well, Jalissa, thank you for being here and thank you for what you do for Texas A&M Corpus Christi and for Texas. That's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Our passion guides us. Our traditions unite us. And generations of Aggies have changed the world. in gold, we stand ready to serve. We are Texas A&M. Texas A&M University is designated as a land, sea, and space grant university. Dr. Pamela Plotkin and the team at Texas Sea Grant are charged with addressing real world needs of the Texas Gulf Coast community. So today we take a look at some of the cutting edge work being done in the Sea Grant program. Texas A&M University has an incredible distinction of being a land grant university, a Sea Grant university, and a space grant university. So when there are challenges on the coast, our people are in the field immediately, helping people, understanding the problem, and then helping the federal and state agencies direct their aid and assistance to the areas that need it most. Most of our staff 
are located in coastal communities from Beaumont down to Brownsville. Whenever someone needs any information, I'm available. I can meet them at a coffee shop. They can come to the facility where I work. I can meet them on the water. I will meet them wherever they want to meet. We have people that have eyes on that environment every single day. And so including their knowledge and their experience is so important to the research process. The Texas Sea Grant College Program is one of 34 Sea Grant programs across the United States. In 1971, Texas A&M University became one of the first four Sea Grant colleges in the nation. Shortly after President Lyndon Johnson signed the National Sea Grant College Program Act into law, paving the way for over 50 years of service to the Lone Star State. Texas Sea Grant's headquarters office is located here on the Texas A&M College Station campus, but our charge is to serve the entire state of Texas. Howdy, this is Texas Sea Grant. We work with all of the system schools within the Texas A&M system with a mission to improve the wise use, understanding, and stewardship of our marine and coastal resources here in Texas. And we do that through funding research, through educational programs, and through our extension programs. Since its inception, Texas Sea Grant has supported over $40 million of research, which directly affects the Texas Gulf Coast. The idea here is that we have researchers who are in the lab and out in the field solving societal problems. They're communicating the research results to our extension team, and our extension team is bringing that information, translating the science to the communities in which they live. There's not just that one flow of information from researchers to extension, but there's a flow in the other direction. So our extension team know what the public needs and wants. And those folks have real significant trust relationships with their coastal communities. I grew up in a fishing community um, up north, actually in New York, before coming to Texas. Being a part of a coastal community and spending my time around fishermen has always been a big part of my life. My community grew up selling seafood and that was their economy. I'm currently based in Galveston, um, but my role is responsible for commercial fisheries throughout the coast of Texas and beyond since our fish don't know jurisdictional boundaries. Working with the shrimp industry takes a long time to build a lot of trust and to let people come on your vessel and you know mess with your nets and your business. We've built a relationship with the shrimp industry in Texas over years of work. That's what I'm here to do, and it's, it's rewarding to know that the industry sees that and looks for our help. Because of fuel costs, imported products, and other economic concerns, Texas Sea Grant services have a tangible impact on the fishing industry. The fishing community along the Texas coast is so important. We, you know, produce a product that helps feed our nation. Without the help and support for this industry to keep them operating sustainably, both commercially uh, from an economic standpoint, as well as an environmental standpoint, then we you know, lose a food source to our country that's in our own backyard. Keeping this industry alive and supporting you know, our food source in the US is a really important aspect of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. For me, being able to come and give back to coastal communities to help support the seafood industry here in the U.S., keep our fishermen working and doing the best they can while also um, being able to protect our environment and make sure that while we're fishing and harvesting, we're not actually damaging our coastal communities and our oceans. I feel very lucky to be in this role.
all across the United States in the last, I'll say, five years, there has been an incredible increase in the uh, demand for oysters and boutique oysters. Due to this growing demand, the Texas House and Senate passed legislation in 2019 which legalized oyster farming along the Texas Gulf Coast. Texas Sea Grant has played a key role in educating the state legislature about the need for oyster aquaculture and has been instrumental in helping this new industry get off the ground. Texas was the last coastal state to allow oyster aquaculture when House Bill 1300 got passed. And what we're really trying to do is start the industry. I'm a Texan born and raised. I'm actually from South Texas. And I was uh, studying oyster aquaculture in Florida. I'm really excited to be able to come back and work with Texans because Honestly, it's, it's right now, this oyster aquaculture industry is it's at its infancy, but it's going to boom, and Texas does not even know what's going to like, what's going to hit them. As the aquaculture specialist for Texas Sea Grant, Mario helps potential and current oyster farmers navigate not just the permitting process, but actually gets on the water with the farmers and shows just what exactly is needed to be successful in the industry. The reputation of Texas oysters is a pretty good one. Currently, um, Texas has permitted three farms. We're expecting to harvest over 1.5 million oysters. It's gonna taste beautiful and look beautiful on a half shell, which is very exciting for us. This has been the greatest gig of my life, to, to get to come back to Texas and to give back to Texas Sea Grant and to Texas A&M University. So much has changed since I was here as an undergraduate and then as a graduate student. The 50 years of the program have been quite stunning, but what I think is most exciting for me is to look at the people that we've impacted in those 50 years. And uh, it's not just been the people who have worked at Texas Sea Grant, but it's the people that we've reached out to. Sometimes we hear from them about what, what we've done and what we've meant to their lives and their careers and their industry for over 50 years. We're here with Pam Plotkin, who is the executive director of Texas Sea Grant. Well, the George Bush Library had a big exhibition on the 50th anniversary of Sea Grant. What was it like to look at that and go back through the whole history of the program? It was a dream come true for me. Texas Sea Grant has done so much in 50 years for the state of Texas, and specifically our coastal communities and our research universities. And so it was nice to be able to highlight the, not just the work that we've done, but all the partners that we've had along the way and our stakeholders and the achievements that we have collectively um, racked up over the last 50 years from understanding the uh, water quality issues like harmful algal blooms and red tide and, and being able to mitigate some of those uh, issues as well as understanding the um, fisheries in our state and, and federal waters and, and trying to restore those fisheries so that we have healthy and sustainable fish populations here in Texas. So you were a graduate student here what was what's it like to be a graduate student and then come back and be the executive director of the Sea Grant program. It's a dream come true to be able to come back to Texas A&M University and give back to my university that gave me so much and also to give back to Texas Sea Grant because Texas Sea Grant supported me as an undergraduate student and as a graduate student. And then as a postgraduate, I was uh, fortunate to get a Marine Policy Fellowship and go to Washington, D.C. So Texas Sea Grant uh, really helped me develop my career. And now I get to do that with others. I get to give faculty uh, research support. I get to give graduate students research grants. And I get to give undergraduate students. So what's next for Texas Sea Grant? 
What's next? That's a great question. We've got a lot to do in the state of Texas, and we're continually evolving along with our coastal and marine resources. And so we're looking to advance um, many different areas of our program. One of them is aquaculture. And aquaculture is a multi-billion dollar industry. And Texas, in particular, hasn't been as competitive as other Gulf states in aquaculture. And so a couple of years ago, the Texas legislature um, passed a, a bill to allow um, bottom, uh, offshore bottom oyster mariculture here in Texas. And that's one of our new growth areas is getting people excited about becoming oyster uh, growers and developing that industry so that we can capture some of that $2.2 billion industry annually that is now um, met by the other Gulf states. About 80 to 90 percent of the oysters that are grown in the United States are grown in the Gulf of Mexico, and Texas has missed out on that. So we're real excited, and we've got an oyster aquaculture specialist who is leading that effort for us and teaching folks how to start their businesses, how to work through the permitting process, and how to be successful very quickly. Thank you, Pam, for being here and for what you do for Texas. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. My name is Lindy Atkins. I attended Texas A&M San Antonio, class of 2021. I obtained a degree in fire administration. I currently work for the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office on the HAZMAT team. Being a firefighter has definitely changed throughout the years. We bring with us subject matter expertise and different technology to protect the county and the surrounding counties from any type of hazardous materials incidents that may occur. If we're not responding to a hazmat call, you can see us uh, out doing community outreach programs throughout the day. I've been in the fire service for 15 years. I do want to make a full-time career out of this, and I would like to move up the ranks and eventually be a fire chief one day. Completing that degree in fire administration was most definitely on the to-do list of things to get accomplished. What I really loved about attending Texas A&M San Antonio was that the program was very practical to my lifestyle and my work style. I worked three fire jobs while obtaining that degree. And with it being 100% online, I didn't have to take a pause or leave an absence from being a firefighter with the end result being that this is definitely going to help me advance up the chain in my career. That's it for this week's show. We'll see you next week on Around Texas.